Hey everybody, what's up? It's Chapman here, and welcome back to the first in a long time. And in this one, we are going to be going over to the top five early game farms for 1.20 Minecraft. A lot has changed since the last time I did one of these videos. Now, before we start, the first thing that you want to do when you start a new world is you want to climb to the highest point in that world and try to see if you can spot yourself a village. It shouldn't be too hard to find one, and once you do, you are already winning. Now, villagers are key to the majority of farms in Minecraft, so the first one up on the list is going to be a villager farm. These are all of the materials that you need in order to build this farm. You are also going to need to bring along two villagers. And trust me, all you have to do is just walk away for a little bit and come back. Start building your base and you're going to be like, what? Where did all these strangers come from? Now, to begin, first thing that we are going to do is we are just going to dig a hole in the center, place some water. That's not water. Place some water inside that hole, and then we're going to till out four blocks each direction and make ourselves a 9x9 nine nine crop field. Now, you can use whatever crops that you want for this. I am going to be using carrots. Now, once you have your crop field done, all we're going to do is place a composter in the center. We're going to put a solid block on top of it. Place four torches around this solid block. This is both going to stop the villager from jumping up onto it, crushing your crops, and they're going to light up the crop field at nighttime so they can grow. And then anywhere along the outsides of these farms, it, lit, it doesn't matter where. We're going to build up two blocks on each side, leaving an opening. We're going to place a trap door in the top, which is going to prevent villagers from going through this opening. And then in this opening, we're going to dig down two blocks in total and place one trap door going down and another trap door going down. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your beds and you're going to place one, two, three four beds like so and then you are going to wrap your fences around all of these beds and this farm leaving yourself an opening on any side wide enough for you to get both of your villages in place now one villager should link up into the composter if he doesn't all you need to do is you just need to remove it replace it and you should get yourself a farmer and then the other villager you're just going to have to wheel yourself you're just going to have to wheel him in yourself. Okay, and once you have both villagers in place, you can just close that up. Free this villager right here. And as you can see, because of that trap door, he is unable to walk through that way and get to those beds. But they are going to link to those beds. And now the only thing that you need to do is go down into this hole. Create yourself a little area where all of your villagers can come out. You can either trap them, free them, or whatever. I mean, there's plenty of ways for you to collect villagers. And then all you have to do from here is wait. After some time, your villager is going to start to harvest all of these crops. He is going to then share those crops. And out of that sharing, you're going to get a baby villager. And you watch, he's immediately going to run right into the hole. With this 9x9 setup right here, you should get one to two villagers every single day. You could throw another composter in there, expand the crop fields, and then get yourself up to four villagers every single day. But that's how you build an early game villager breeder. You might want to put a roof on this thing too. I never include roof materials, but witches. Lightning bolts can turn these guys into witches. Okay, next up on the list, since we have ourselves some villagers, we're going to build a crop farm. Now, we're going to use these crops in order to trade, in order to get more emeralds, in order to trade to get more items. So these are the items that you are going to need to build the entire thing. The rail and the minecart with a hopper are an upgrade. But to start, these are the items that you are going to need right here. If anyone is curious, that is 80 crops for a 9x9. And just like the villager breeder, the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to dig a hole... We're going to put some water in that hole. And then we're going to use our hoe and we're going to till another 9x9 nine nine crop area. Once your crop field is done, we're going to take the composter and we're going to place it above the water in the center with a solid block on top and then four torches on each side in order to light up all of the crop fields. With that done, we are going to come to any one of the four sides and we are going to start from the center and we are going to dig out four blocks. We are going to place down a double chest with two hoppers going into that double chest. And then behind this center hopper here, we are going to dig this out and we are going to place a slab in the bottom. 
With that done, we're going to take our trap doors and we're going to place one above the slab going up, another one above the hopper also going up, and then two solid blocks on either side of those trap doors. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place a temporary block with a slab at the top there. And then we are going to surround this entire crop field with our fences. Leaving an opening in order to get our villager in place. And we're also going to surround this. Leaving a single opening here on the back in order to drop the villager in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to free our villagers. One of them should link up to the composter if they don't. Oh no, we're going to get it. We're going to get it. Boom, locked in. And now let's see what the other one does. Okay, close enough. Now all we need to do is get this villager down and into there. And trust me, once he's down and inside and on that slab, it doesn't matter if the grass is beside him. He doesn't jump up and out of it. But with all of that done and in place, now all we need to do is we need to just wait for the crops to grow, this guy to harvest them, and then we have ourselves a crop farm. Now, running the farm like this, you do run into the potential of this guy's inventory filling up with crops and then these guys never trading again. So if you do have the items with you, this is how you upgrade this farm, okay? You need a rail and a minecart with hopper. All you need to do is just break into your farm and not let the villager loose. And then we are going to remove this trap door in the front. We are still going to need it though. And we are going to place down a rail with a minecart on top. We are now going to remove that rail. And then above this hopper, we are going to place a trap door. Now, once this guy goes to trade, he's basically just going to drop the crops down on this little table here. The minecart is going to instantly pull them down. And we never have to worry about this guy's inventory back here filling up. And that is how it works. Did you see that? It happened so fast. But we captured all of those crops. Not a single one went to this villager right here. But with that complete, that is now your crop farm complete. Farm number two. Okay, and number three on the list is going to be the chicken farm. We're going to get food out of this one. And believe it or not, you don't even have to go to the nether in order to get the resources for this. This is everything that you're going to need for the farm right here. You need a dispenser and a tiny little bit of redstone. And you're also going to need your chicken's eggs too, so that way you can hatch some chickens. And the first thing that you're going to do for this is you're going to put down a chest with a hopper going into it and then a slab on top of that hopper. And then behind that slab, we're just going to place down a piece of glass with a dispenser facing in and a hopper going into the dispenser now with that setup right there complete all we're going to do is we're going to take our glass and we're going to build up four blocks in total around the front hopper and then right here above this slab in front of this hopper we are going to place down our lava and that is what is going to cook our chicken for us and then around this top hopper right here all we need to do is we just need to build ourselves a too high cage oh no this is not good and this is for us to start throwing our chickens eggs so that way we can hatch our chickens oh sorry and we want 24 chickens in total in here hopefully we can get 24 chickens out of this and we did not but we want 24 chickens in this hole because 24 is the max that we can do without entity cramming or before entity cramming but once you have your chickens in place now all you need to do is just wait for them to grow up and an easy way to do that is to actually just kind of feed them some seeds if you can and once they do start to grow up you are ready and you are done okay once you have your 24 chickens in place up top and they are all just waiting to grow up this is what you should have right here now, with this setup, all the chicken's eggs are going to do is they're just going to sit here in the dispenser. So in order to power this, all we need to do is we need to just place two cobblestone blocks like so. And then we're going to place two torches on those cobblestone blocks with another block above this torch. And then last but not least, we just need two pieces of redstone dust. Now, what that is going to do, that is going to give us a burnout torch, as you can see which is going to power this dispenser, basically firing anything that comes into it into this little section right here. Okay, now to speed this up a little bit, once all of these chickens grow up, what they're going to do is they're going to start to lay eggs. And once those eggs end up in this hopper, they're going to go down into the dispenser. This dispenser is now going to fire those eggs and... Oh my god, out of 16 eggs, we didn't get one chick? 
Oh, there we go. And because of the slab, the chicks are going to end up on top of it. But because their hitbox is so small, you can see they're not actually touching the lava, even though their face is directly in the lava. And now what's going to happen is once those chickens do grow up, they're going to touch the lava, get immediately cooked, and we are going to end up with cooked chicken in our farm. Okay, do you guys see that? That is how the farm works. The chicken grows up, it gets a little bit bigger, and out of it we get cooked. Wait a minute. <laughs> I forgot I renamed that, but you get cooked chicken out of the whole thing. Okay, now fourth up on the list is going to be the infamous iron farm. You need iron for pretty much everything. These are all of the items that you are going to need in order to build the farm. Yes, you need three shovels. And this is for the basic farm. If you want to upgrade it so that it gets a little bit faster, these are the items that you need to bring here. Either walls or glass. You don't need to bring them both. And then some lava. You're also going to need to bring along three villagers and a zombie for this. You don't even need to name tag him, though. And the first thing that we're going to do for this farm is that we're going to place three beds in like a little bit of a V. And then we're going to cover all of those beds with some trap doors. Now, behind these beds, we're just going to jump up and we're going to build up four blocks in total. And then it doesn't really matter where you build this platform, but we're going to build ourselves a 3x3 three three platform that is above the beds and that is so that way we can also contain the villagers and then on the outside of this platform we're going to surround this with three temporary blocks and then we're going to cover all of these temporary blocks with our fences now what we're going to do is in each one of these corners right here we're going to take up two temporary blocks and then we're going to place a solid block on top of it. And what these are going to do is these are going to crush the iron golem when he does spawn on top of this platform. So now the only thing left that we need to do is we need to create a little collection system for our iron. So on either one of these corners, what we're going to do is we're just going to place down a chest. And then we're going to remove two of these temporary blocks and run four hoppers going into that chest on either side. Now with that done, all we need to do is we need to place some water in the opposite corner of those hoppers. We need to jump down and remove all of our temporary blocks. And with that setup right there, that is your iron farm nearly complete. Now what we're going to do while we wait for nighttime to come, around these beds right here, we're going to dig this out one block below. And what that is going to do is that's going to prevent the villagers from jumping out outside of the area here and allow them to just jump inside to that center block that is right there where this little gap is. And then what you're going to do is from that center area or that center gap right there is you're going to take your shovels and you're going to count out eight blocks in total. One, two, and you're going to turn these all into path blocks. And this is going to cost you three stone shovels in total. But what this is going to do is this is going to prevent any iron golems from spawning outside of the platform up there. And with all of that path find out, that is what you should have right there. So from the center block, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then each direction from the center block, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you should have a 16 by 16 area that is pathfind out. Or if you want, you can turn all of this into cropland and even just grow some materials if you would like to. Next, before nighttime comes, what we're going to do is from the front bed here, we're going to count out one, two, three, and we're just going to place down two temporary blocks. And then in front of those temporary blocks, we're going to place down a boat. We're going to hop in that boat and then we're going to move that boat forward until it is perfectly in line with that line right there on that lower block. Just like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our two slabs and we are going to place them above the boat. 
And now that nighttime is here, all we need to do is we need to create a small little ramp, open up this trap door, and allow all of our villagers to link up to those beds. Now, if you have a villager that is not linking up to those beds, all you need to do is just remove this and then replace it, and he should start to link up. And once all three villagers are linked up to their beds, all we need to do is just remove any temporary blocks that we did place down and make sure that we turn any remaining blocks into path blocks. We need to get rid of any of these villagers that are around us. And the easiest way to do that is to place a wall around our farm. And with our wall in place, now our last step for this farm in order to activate it is that we just actually need to make sure that these trap doors or these slabs, we actually want these slabs to be on the bottom half of a block and not the top half so that way an iron golem does not spawn on top of it. And then we just need to get a zombie inside that boat like that. It's literally that easy. That's how easy it is. Now all we need to do is we just need to close him in so that way the iron golem can't get him. We need to get rid of this iron golem. And then we just need to quickly expose this zombie to the villagers. But we need to do so without spawning any more iron golems outside of the farm. So we need to turn any temporary blocks that we placed into dirt blocks. And then you should officially have your iron farm. Now, there's one key thing that we want with this farm is we actually want these villagers to be jumping. And there's two ways that we can get them to be jumping. One, we can either pull the zombie in a little bit closer. And then we can remove these two blocks here and put down a trap door. See, that is going to allow them to be scared of the zombie. Or we can just leave everything as is and we can place a water source at these guys' toes. Doing that is basically going to be the exact same thing, but now there's one last step that you need in order to keep this running. We need to break the eye contact with the zombie and the villagers. And the easiest way to do that is all we need to do is just remove this block here, place down two temporary blocks above this bed. So I guess we can just do the one, and then we just need to replace the trap door. So that is where it needs to go. And doing those two simple things right there are going to make your iron farm run infinitely forever. And that is actually the most consistent setup right there. But like I said, if you don't have the water, you can get away with it. All you have to do is just put down a trap door and then remove this. But if you do have the extra water, I would just simply put that in there because honestly, it's no big deal. But that is the iron farm running and working. And now I have so many iron farm videos that I'm not even going to explain to you guys how to upgrade this thing. I think I have nine different versions spanning four years of Minecraft now. So, uh, yeah, but that is it right there. Your iron farm. Okay. And number five on the list is going to be a toss up. Okay. It's a toss up between the early game raid farm and a material farm, a beaconless material farm. And we're going with the beaconless stone farm, ladies and gentlemen. And these are the items that we are going to need for it. Now, this doesn't have to be glass. We're just doing glass so that we can kind of see what's going on. And we really need four water in total for this. So I'm just bringing two along. So that way we can make an infinite water source. And the first thing that we need to do for this stone farm is we need to just place down a double chest with four hoppers going into the back of it like so and then we need to just place down a temporary block and place four stairs all kind of pointed towards the hoppers like that and then with that done we're going to take our solid blocks and we're going to place them above the stairs and then we need a four block section right here where we need to place our lava so we have to kind of build out and around and we need to create a little trough like that now what we're going to do is we're just going to fill this in on the sides, place a piece of glass here, another one at the back, and then just to avoid any pop outs, we're going to place another block here. And that is essentially what you need. Now you can make this a lot more cleaner and a lot more better if you would like to, but that is essentially it. Now what we need to do is we need to create an infinite water source and we need to fill all of these stairs with 
some water. But to do this, we're gonna have to contain the water so it doesn't flow out. But to do this, we're gonna have to contain the water so it doesn't flow out. So we're gonna place a trap door right there. And then we're just gonna start to fill. And there. Once you have all four stairs, filled now all we need to do is we just need to place a lava source in any one of these center blocks here and we have ourselves a stone farm now this block here you're probably going to end up removing this one anyways when you're farming so if you would like you can replace that with a trap door or a sign and then with all of that done you are finished you have a beaconless stone farm that you can just farm stone forever and ever and ever. Now, the way that we are gonna use this is we are gonna press F3, A and T. And what that is gonna do while we're holding down the attack button is that is gonna just let us farm. I'm not touching nothing right now. Look at, I'm just farming away. Hold on, let me go into, th look at this. I'm not touching anything and I'm farming. But that is it right there. That is how easy it is to just sit here and farm stone forever. All you need is about 10 or 20 minutes so that you're going to have so much. And look at just in that time right there, I already got a stack plus 25. And all I was doing was talking and showing some stuff. But that is it right there. That is your stone farm early game building materials. You don't even need a beacon or anything for it. And that everybody is the 1.20 top five early game farm. And look at in the amount of time that it took us to build those other farms we have all of these villagers plus some babies we have a full row of carrots already too as well take in mind that i already fed this guy some too so seven cooked chicken we should have a lot more though but i didn't put the my cart in the bottom and already a stack plus one of iron just from taking the time that it took to build that stone generator down there. But that's it. There's your updated top five early game farms in Minecraft. Obviously, you're going to have to build a collection system for the villagers. But other than that, that's it. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.